and uh, Madam Evelyn Bright. I like the name. Yeah, and then when uh, Ousa, Ousa, uh, this gentleman is in charge of 72,000 CBOs in the country. And how they manage to do this is, is it remains a mystery. And um, CMA um, it's amazing that you're doing this for the first time. We congratulate you. And I also want to congratulate my fellow awardees in the various categories. Um, and, and I'm sure that I would have loved to join them at the Serena. But there was a bit of a mix-up. We were ready to go to Rights on Blue, then it was changed to Serena. Uh, be that as it may, we have a country to think about, to love, to uphold the principles that hold us together, basically the rule of law. And we have a region that is in dire need of mediation. And even before we go to the, to the region, the country itself, um, I happen to be a certified mediator myself and I went through a mediation course. Uh, and and uh, I'm sure that may not have been captured. But people remember that when we were given some jobs to do by two presidents, President uh, Daniel Apmoy at that time as a young foreign minister, and if you allow me to mention Evelyn, you just mentioned to me that your grandmother is a famous Elizabeth Bagaya who served as foreign minister in Uganda. Uh, and now she's doing regional work, literally. Can somebody hold this for me? Uh, now that I've taken position. Um, so you see you have uh, that DNA of working for regional well-being, the integration of East Africans. Uh, I gather from Evelyn that the next stop will be Dar es Salaam in February. And I will want to bring on board people like my friend Jakaya Kikwete and others. And I remember that Kenyans and East Africans will have forgotten that I was actually given the responsibility by Bayao, believe it or not, by three presidents, President Yoweri Museveni, President Moy, and President uh, Ali Hassan Mwini, to jumpstart the East African community. That time it was just cooperation. And I was the first chair uh, of that ministerial tripartite commission. My colleagues were president uh, at that time, foreign minister of Tanzania was Regasira. Kikweta had not even been appointed foreign minister. And Rugunda, who later became prime minister of Uganda, was also the foreign minister of Uganda. We worked with speed because we recognized East Africans made a terrible mistake when the East African community collapsed in 1977. Again, unknown to Kenyans and East Africans, Breta Nefa, she told the police to their face. And even as we speak, those issues have not been sorted. We heard from this administration of William Ruto that um, they were going to compensate the youths who lost their lives. The families are still waiting. No compensation, no talk even, no indication whatsoever that you are willing to talk to these parents. Well, I think it is important. Justice demands that we don't make promises that we can't keep or we don't intend to keep. They just wanted an escape route, which they got. Some of us afforded them an escape route. And then they got all of it. And in fact, some of us who belong to the Azumio family <laughs> are benefiting from the blood and the sweat of the many Kenyans who came to the streets and the whole world stood still and took notice of the Gen C revolt and movement. In the book of Ephesians, uh, where the Bible tells us, Life in you, live 
peaceably with all men. Leaders, we will be there looking for votes and calling each other names. But remember we have a country. We are all at the end of the day Kenyans, East Africans and members of the world community. Therefore the example of the Gen C and the millennials. By the way, they are the ones who came out in Botswana hardly two weeks ago. The Gen C's and the millennials <laughs> came out. So, I think it's within the mediation spirit to ask this administration to give IDs to these young Kenyans. Because they want to come and teach some people a lesson of their lives. <laughs> like they did. They did in Botswana where the ruling party that time, the president who did one term, and, and if you look at what happened in Botswana, you can almost see exactly what has happened in Kenya. Uh, the president was driven out by the Gen Cs and the millennials, was torturing his predecessor Khan, Ian Khan, I think that's the name. Yeah. And, and in fact, that president escaped, former president went to South Africa on exile. And, and then you preach hatred, Again, remember the biblical principle. You kill by the sword, you die by the sword. Eh. So, there's so much. When God gives us bread, let us live peaceably with each other. Don't punish your opponents. You know now, there are business people in this country who cannot dare to be identified with your position. Because they know the KRA people will be on their case tomorrow. <laughs> Eh, yani watu anaishi kwa, kwa, kwa woga. So we must say no to fear in a democracy. You cannot have that principle of fear and call yourself a democratic state. Therefore the Gen Z said, whether we die, they were almost like Paul who wrote and said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. They said to die is gain. So we have to redeem this land. So that blood cannot have been shed in vain. In 2023, at these grounds, after the demonstrations, the churches in Nairobi could not even allow us to hold some requiem mass for the 70, some, almost 70 young people who died. So we had to put a tent here. You may remember media um, um, colleagues that we were putting wreaths here. Former President Uhuru was here, Raila was here, I was here, and other leaders. We couldn't even be allowed to bury those young people decently. And we ferried them to Siaya, to Makweni. We ferried them. And then, a repeat of 2024, this time led by the Gen Cs. So there's time now, there's need for us to talk mediation and ability to live together as Kenyans. Though we will disagree, as indeed we ought to, in a democracy, but let us remain, remember that, what is it that is the nexus holding us together? Our Constitution 2010 bequeathed to us by President Kibaki. At least hold that. Let's hold to that constitutionalism, that sense of constitutionalism and the rule of law. And uh, when we say to Meomizana, people should be say, to say sorry, literally, and do something about it. We will on Friday here be addressing a very critical issue because our research team is on it. So media, don't be tired. We want to talk about this vaccination of 22 million cows. Hey. Mutashanga kabisa. The reason behind it. People using climate change debate say our cows produce methane gas, which is okay. Our cows. Right? And because of the, the clever Kenyans actually do biogas. We, they cook with it. Now they want to vaccinate our cows in order to stop producing 
<laughs> Can you imagine? Because they see you in a, in a offend the ozone layer. And to use Kenya as, the, as a guinea pig. So after this vaccination of 22, cow, 22, 22 million cattle, we will be eating meat. Meat that has been genetically modified. It's not enough that they have lifted the orders on GMO and we have gone to the appeal court. GMO. We need therefore this mediation spirit in us so we know, tell each other the truth. So this is really, come to think of it, this is dangerous stuff. But we'll be talking about it on Friday. When Jeremiah Kioni kept on talking about this over the weekend, I was wondering, what is Kioni talking about? Until the reality has hit me. So, we will say a polite and firm no to some of these machinations. And uh, we'll ask our people. By saying no, you're not saying you don't belong to Kenya or you want to immigrate. No, this is the only land. This is our land. Yeah. In the book of Isaiah, Kenyans have tried to identify where Kenya is. The land beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Ah, so this land is important. I don't know whether it will be in order for me to ask one or two of my colleagues. Yeah, um, Paloma. We take a picture first. We face that way. So you want us to turn the chairs? The front. Okay. I really hope I never could be here in